the traditional counties of England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, are 92 historic subdivisions of the United Kingdom. They are also known as the historic, ancient or geographical counties. The historic counties, so-called because they have a lot of history, have existed over 1,000 years in some cases, and many centuries in others. While each historic county may have originally been set up for some public purpose or other, long before the beginning of the 19th century, it was their geographical and cultural identities that were paramount. The counties were considered to be territorial divisions of the country, whose names and areas had been fixed for many centuries and were universally known and accepted. They are an indelible part of the history, heritage, geography and culture of the United Kingdom. However, particularly since 1974, many county identities have been unnecessarily eroded, while some have been crushed almost to the point of extinction. This is mainly as a result of confusion created by the misuse of the term county and misuse of historic county names in local admin zones. Let's rescue them before it's too late. 1. Maps and roads to include historic county boundaries. 2. Remove the term county from the names of local admin zones. 3. Realign ceremonial counties to match traditional counties. Simple they may be, but they are only achievable with legislation. We therefore work with parliamentarians from all political parties. Our campaign is not about the boundaries of local admin zones. Our campaign is about promoting and better celebrating our historic counties, the ancient territorial divisions that have defined local culture for centuries. Despite many supportive government statements over the years, some of these traditional counties are in danger of being lost forever. The current confusion surrounding Britain's county stems from the fact that there are currently three different definitions of county in law, when only one is necessary. This confusion is compounded by the term county being used to describe local admin zones, whether or not they are actual counties. Implementing our objectives would end this confusion and rescue county identities, allowing counties to return to the only role they had for centuries before the advent of modern local government, geographical and cultural areas, unrelated to local administration. The division of England into shires, later known as counties, began in the Kingdom of Wessex in the mid-Saxon period, with many of the Wessex shires representing previously independent kingdoms. With the Wessex conquest of Mercia in the 9th and 10th centuries, the system was extended to central England. At the time of the Doomsday Book, northern England comprised Cheshire and Yorkshire, with the northeast being unrecorded. The remaining counties of the north, Westmoreland, Lancashire, Cumberland, Northumberland, Durham, were established in the 12th century. Rutland was first recorded as a county in 1159. The Scottish counties have their origins in the sheriffdoms, first created in the reign of Alexander I, 1107-1124, and extended by David I, 1124-1153. The sheriff, operating from a royal castle, was the strong hand of the king and his sheriffdom with all-embracing duties, judicial, military, financial and administrative. Sheriffdoms had been established over most of southern and eastern Scotland by the mid-13th century. Although there was a degree of fluidity in the areas of these early sheriffdoms, the pattern of sheriffdoms that existed in the late medieval period is believed to be very close to that existing in the mid-19th century. The central and western highlands and the isles, where resistance to government was strongest, were not assigned to shires until the early modern period, Caithness becoming a sheriffdom in 1503 and Orkney in 1540. The present-day pattern of the historic counties of Wales was established by the Laws in Wales Act 1535. This act abolished the powers of the Lordships of the March and established the counties of Denvershire, Montgomeryshire, Radnorshire, Brecknockshire and Monmouthshire from the areas of the former Lordships. The other eight counties had, by then, already been in existence since at least the 13th century. The historic counties are, however, based on much older, traditional areas. The division of Ireland into counties began during the reign of King John, 1199 to 1216. 
This process continued for several hundred years, as more of Ireland came under the control of the English crown. Munster was divided into counties in 1571 and Connaught in 1579. Finally, Ulster was shired during the reign of James I. The complete set of counties, as they are today, were laid down in 1584, with their modern boundaries not finally settled until 1605 or 1613 in the case of Londonderry, albeit that most of it had existed as County Coleraine from Anglo-Norman times. As in Wales, the counties were generally based on earlier, traditional areas. Before 1888, the only ambiguity concerning what was or was not a county concerned the status of the county's corporate, those towns or cities which various statutes had given the title county of a town or county of a city, along with many of the administrative functions normally associated with a county. The county corporate status has generally been seen as an extra dignity added to a town and has not usually been taken to mean that the town has literally been removed from its host county. For example, the General Register Office, within its census reports, always dealt with them as being part of the county in which they lay geographically. Bristol is one such example. A detached part of an historic county can be defined as a small enclave of that county, which is entirely separated from the main body of that county, and locally situate, either entirely within the main body of another county, or between the main bodies and or detached parts of two or more other counties. Many of the historic counties have detached parts. Like the exterior boundaries, most are believed to date back to at least the time of the conquest. It has long been the convention to associate a detached part with both its parent county and the county in which it is locally situated. This definition of a detached part would not normally include the Mail or Seasneg area of Flintshire, the Furness area of Lancashire or the Cumbernauld Kirkintillich area of Dumbartonshire. These areas form such large fractions of the total county area, that they are better considered, separate parts of the main bodies of these counties. While each historic county may have originally been set up for some public purpose or other, long before the beginning of the 19th century, it was their geographical and cultural identities that were paramount. No single administrative function defined them. Rather, the counties were considered to be territorial divisions of the country, whose names and areas had been fixed for many centuries and were universally known and accepted. The counties were clearly recognized legal entities. This is witnessed by the fact that innumerable acts of parliament made reference to them and used them as the basic geographical framework for various administrative functions. The notes to the 1831 census state, from the Doomsday Book of the Conqueror, 1086 AD, it is known that county limits have since that time undergone no alteration, in fact they have been jealously maintained. Any assertion, therefore, that county boundaries have always changed, is completely wrong. The current confusion surrounding Britain's counties stems from the fact that there are currently three different definitions of the term county in law. 1. Administrative counties, defined by the Local Government Act 1972. 2. Ceremonial counties, defined by the Lieutenancies Act 1997. 3. Historic counties, geographical boundaries that date back over many centuries. There is no need for definitions 1 and 2 to exist alongside the historic counties. It is therefore part of our campaign that the term county should not be used to mean an admin zone, and that ceremonial counties should match the historic counties. The result of this would be a return to just one definition of the term county and end much of the current county confusion. In the late 19th century, when modern local government was first created, the areas of its administrative counties were loosely based on the historic counties, and local government remained fairly closely based on the historic counties, from 1888 to 1965. However, numerous local government reforms since then mean that few local authorities now have an area anything like any historic county. 
Despite this, county and county council are still used in local government terminology. Many councils also use the name of an historic county, despite having a very different area from that county. Definition 1 basically refers to local admin zones, county councils, shown here in red. These have no need to be called counties, and the fact that they use this name in law is unhelpful to the actual counties, which predate the Victorian local government creations by many centuries. Definition 2 refers to ceremonial counties or lieutenancy areas, the geographical area defined for each of His Majesty's Lord's Lieutenant. The office of Lord Lieutenant was created in the 1540s for the purpose of organizing the local militia. The office has never defined the counties, which predate that office by many centuries. Prior to 1889, the Lord's Lieutenant and Sheriffs were appointed directly to the historic counties, and their areas remained very close to the historic counties until 1974. There is no practical obstacle to a return to this approach. In contrast to England and Wales, many of the lieutenancies of Scotland are closely aligned with an historic county and not aligned with current local government areas. This presents no problem to their operation. The Lieutenancies Act 1997 governs the organisation of the lieutenancies of Great Britain. To properly align the lieutenancies with the historic counties, it is our view that the lieutenancy areas should be defined in terms of the historic county standard widely recognized, for example by the Office for National Statistics, as the standard definition for the names and geographical areas of the historic counties. The practice prior to 1974 ascribed a Lord Lieutenant to each of the ridings of Yorkshire, to the Isle of Wight and the City of London. The Isle of Wight is part of the historic county of Hampshire, but has always had its own Lord Lieutenant, with the Governor of the Island previously fulfilling the role. For the City of London, the post of Lord Lieutenant is held in commission, with the Lord Mayor head of the commission. We are happy for these arrangements to be the basis for realignment of ceremonial counties to match traditional counties. We also accept, pragmatically, that the lieutenancies should be defined by use of definition A of the historic county standard, whereby detached parts of counties are not separately identified, but are associated with their host county. Furthermore, any move to base the lieutenancies on the historic counties should be done in a way which makes it clear that the office of Lord Lieutenant does not define the historic county. The current chaos and confusion surrounding Britain's counties would end with the implementation of our objectives. Let's rescue Britain's historic counties before it's too late.